Lee, welcome back. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Pete. <laughs> it's so good to see you. I haven't see seen you, you like for at least... 30 seconds. S- uh, me- at least. When did you go to the toilet? And then yeah. that's like, oh, I haven't seen you for like <laughs> um, two welcome weeks. Welcome back to another episode of the Tales from the Pedal Cabinet video, uh, which is a series uh, that's been running yeah. almost as long as EastEnders now. Uh, where we, <laughs> and uh, it's grab- almost as boring. Yes. Uh, some, sometimes. There's slightly less drama. <laughs> where we're, we're re... I can't speak. Uh, where Oof. we grab uh, pedals at random, usually the lesser well-known pedals from our pedal. Yeah, our new pedals. Or... Uh, to yep. see what they sound like. Yeah. Um, this week we have got On two pedals uh, from a company called FFX Pedals. Yeah, Frank. Portuguese. FFX Pedals. They're not Portuguese. Is he in English? They're German. German? Yeah. Okay. What would FFX be in German then? How would they pronounce the word F? I think it's just the F, isn't the letter it? F. V. Vowel is a V. Vowel, is it It's F? not one of those letters they pronounce differently to us, is it? No, I can't I remember. Know. Right, okay. So Sorry. FFX uh, from Frank Germany. FX, All you can boost, which actually I've just uh, put one of these on my board, which yeah, I like. Yeah, it's a good pedal. Uh, I don't know if that's any sort of endorsement whatsoever. <laughs> and the Surreal, uh, which is Surreal. And we'll get to that in a minute. Then uh, from uh, J Rocket, uh, builders of classic pedals like the Archer, the Dude, and the Dude, and the yeah. Boing, and things. They have the El Hombre. Hombre. We haven't um, done any which of them. Which their is pedals a drive pedal. Yeah. And then from our very own um, Adrian Thorpe from Thorpe Effects. I say our very own. I just mean yeah. as in we know him. Yeah. We don't own him as such. Um, and this is the Scarlet Tunic, which he built in with collaboration with Lee Harris, who was uh, one of the uh, guitar players in Saucer Full of Secrets, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. all that kind of um, Lee of Floyd stuff. And where, yeah, I met Lee, video up there, where yeah. we talk about what he's doing and a little bit about this pedal. I think I came away from that video um, wanting to know more about this pedal because yes. we started it going, is it just like a Selma amp modeling-y yeah. type thing? And Total sort base. of ended it by going like, there's loads in here. So I'm quite looking forward to doing yeah, this yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a clean, we've got an amplifier with a, with a clean and a, and a mild crunchy yeah. tone. So here's a clean. Super affordable. Very fun, affordable. Uh, Every, everyone should have one of the these. Whole, the whole rig is super <laughs> whole affordable. Is super affordable. Uh, and uh, timestamps for, for, the, for these pedals, yeah. Oh yes, timestamps. If you want to jump ahead, uh, we've even included now a special Rick Beato timestamp. So if you ever get bored, you can just find that and go and watch another video. Yeah, go on, <laughs> go on, go on watch the Rick Beato timestamp. Uh, this is my Because we know quick, we, all quick love lesson. A, we all love a bit of Rick. Here's a quick, quick um, lesson on how to... Yes, how to play. And then you're two seconds in, you're going, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> But amazing, it's incredible. Uh, a bit of cl- uh, an overdrive as well. In case we and need that. That's useful because I suspect both of these pedals will be used um, to, to drive yeah. the, uh, gainy tones as well. I've got my purple ones over there. And I've got a pink one. What does that yeah. say about me and Pete? I don't know. Oh, look so, at this pink one that's here. Right, we've got two sides to this pedal. Uh, this side turns on the controls, the three controls at the bottom. This side can turns the three controls at the top. I can't remember actually, even though I've got one on my board. Does it work? I don't think the EQ no, work. works. No, so here. So yeah, it's, yeah, that's it. So you, you have to have the boost element of the pedal engaged boost. to get the EQ bits to work as well. If I remember rightly, one of the boosts acts more like a sort of a pre-gain and the other a mm, bit more like a post-gain. Uh-huh. And then you've got this high-pass filter over here. So yeah. let's get into it. Yeah, I seem to remember having that, um, having the hype all the way off. Yes, yeah, it's, so, it's, so it's just... Sort of- So this is of, um, this is taking bass away yeah. as you turn it up. Yeah. So that's if you're on a, in a if you listen to solo thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Put the bass back in. Just turn it all the way down. So B B one is adding the drivey bit. B two is more like just a clean boosty mm. kind Sounds of. Sounds good. I was just going to demonstrate the extent of the gain in it. So this is sort of maximum gain. (laughs) 
So it's quite a bit, but I don't, I'm just trying, I'm, I'm leaning over to see how I set mine. I went with slightly less of B1 and a bit more of B2 to yeah. use it as more of a clean boosty kind Bananas of Bananas in pyjamas. So. That's a good, that's a good And then what I was using the EQ for yeah. was typically, again, I might roll a little bit of the bass off, uh, push the mid range a little bit more, get that more lead guitar solo kind of bass vibe, off. so. And that's, that's a, yeah, and that's this that's a good sound. This man. appealed to have on my board because I kind of thought when I've got different guitars that I'm playing and demonstrating, and each yeah. one just feels like it needs a slight nuance to to accentuate or remove a, yeah. a certain thing to get a sound. I just thought it would be handy to have this, particularly the EQ at my feet. I mean, I suppose EQ pedals aren't anything new, but like an EQ and a boost separately switchable, yeah. I thought was kind of cool. Um, that sounds great, man. Can we just put a little bit of gain on from yeah. here and show how you might use it? I mean, uh, um, that sounds great, man. Even with if, that. If anything, I think the, the, there's so much boost in this pedal yeah. uh, that actually you have to sort of just get used to having the knobs a little bit lower down. You know, you don't don't worry about thinking, oh, it's probably not doing much. It's Ooh. definitely doing a lot. Oh, yeah. That's great tuning, that one, isn't yeah. it? Two very boring minutes later. Uh, here's a Les Paul. Here's a Les Paul. Can't do, so this is still clean. Clean, that's still clean. clean. I want to show oh. the... Even then I can, you know, that bass end that I think with that kind of guitar and that type of amp, which yeah. might get flubby, you can tame it. Love it and it just sounds great. Yeah. Say, speaking of great sounding amplifiers as well, you know, you know Brummy Steve that does the Marshall demos? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he was doing a demo of the old 1987 head. Like oh, just, the 1987 X? X. Oh, and again, oh, that's such and a I, good head, It man. sounded great. And you just sort of think to yourself... I love that head. Yeah. You can we, give me that we, head any day. Any day. Any day. Head from 1987. Yeah. Uh, that was a good time. Uh, it was. Well. Anyway, so this you didn't is, this really is... know what you were doing, but you just turned everything up, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So, so that's the uh, experiment and more, right? X and and isn't that weird? Well, I don't know why I never ever quite got to the bottom of why Marshall used model numbers like 1959 and 1987 and stuff like that because they had absolutely nothing to do with the year, did they? No. So I don't know. Maybe someone will comment below. Come on, Lee. What's next? This next one, I thought it was probably something like this just from the from the picture on the front and the name, but yeah. I di I didn't know it for definite. So this is. You know, a little bit like your Echoplex booster yes. kind of thing. So this is basically, um, this is the preamp from, according to the, the, the website, anyway, an old Dynacord 
Echo Reverb Ooh. Oh yes, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. made in the 70s. Apparently a lot of session players used it. I was saying to Pete just before we were doing this video, I'd, I'd seen something on YouTube recently of, a, of an old band and I, I can't remember who it was, whether it was The Who or Zeppelin or who? it might have been none of those bands, but I remember seeing yeah. like a reel to reel machine yeah, yeah. sat on top of the guy's amp that he obviously was just using as some sort of preamp boost. Yeah. Or I don't know, maybe he was using it for some sort of chorus echo. I don't know what he was doing, but I, I thought, oh, I wonder if that's something like this. Anywho. <laughs> So, the first thing that happened, sorry. the first thing that happened when Pete and I tried this on yeah, was like, it didn't do anything at all. So here's a here's a chord. Fattens it up a bit. A little doesn't bit, doesn't it? Maybe we had it at twelve. Fattens it up slightly. Pfft, margin. Yeah. So we were like, oh, that doesn't one. do a lot, does it? And then we sort of turned it up a little bit, and it did a bit. And, and then, then we turned it up a bit more and it went, whoa! <laughs> there, that was. That's a good blue sound, man, isn't it? Clean and fat, but, but not clean. <laughs> to the volume level, hold on a sec. Look at the, the uh, just everybody, I know you keep asking, that's a decibel meter in the corner. And that's not even full yet. Someone's gonna have fun with that pedal, man. You know, there's a lot. That's, I mean, that's, that's quite a bassy amplifier and cabinet, isn't it? And there's yeah. a lot of bass coming in here. Yeah. I kind of feel it's a bit overwhelming how you want to do it. I almost feel like Oof. what you need is an old Marshall yeah, yeah, that too, doesn't too. have a lot of bass end on there and yeah. that just wants yeah, the front that. end just. Yeah. Oof. That is cool though, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean it's. I mean, for, for somebody who's looking for that kind of, if you want boost on tap on mass, let's let's, let's go. Um, yeah, bolos. Lay poly poo. Let's poly poo. Yeah, I mean, I, have I you like... ever seen a pink less poly? Uh, I was thinking about it. Have we ever had pink less balls in? Good idea. I think that's I a good know. idea. Just a pink yeah. top. Probably. Why yeah. Not? Does. I mean, wow. It's not very subtle. It sort of goes, <laughs> I'm not doing a lot, I'm not doing a lot, I'm doing a lot. Um, but Jeremy Clark that sounds that one, all right, doesn't it? Don't mind that. That's the surreal. So both yeah. these company uh, both these pedals from the same company, FFX. I'm yeah. gonna look up how much they are for Frank you, ladies and gentlemen, just to save you the clicks. Uh, but if you do want to click, the links will be in the description below. Do you know what? In a world I of do that. crazily priced. Uh, boutique pedals. These yeah. aren't bad. Okay. One thirty-nine for this one. One twenty-five for this one. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, I agree too. You get a lot of. Th that's, that's barely a tank of petrol at the moment, isn't no, it? No, it's not even um, a quarter of a tank of petrol. So, right, Mr. Pete. Yes. I'm afraid you're going to have to switch back to the Les Paul because I have just read oh. the description okay. of the El Hombre. And it is based El on Hombre. the classic tones of the bearded Texas legend. 
Oh! That is. Billy. Yes. Malaise. Um, so Malaise. it's basically, you know, it says it here, it's the ideal overdrive for those feeling the blues. Right? That's us. Every day. Every single morning um, I wake up, I cry immediately. So there are three <laughs> controls, volume, gain, and bite. Bite. Yeah. You ever been bitten by Billy Gibbons? I've been bitten by lots of people. Uh, Not here Billy we go. Gibbons. So into the clean sound. People with uh, beards many times. And let's see what Women it sounds with beards like. as well. We'll go, we'll go everything at sort of one o'clock. We'll go sort of Mick Taylor settings. Gain in there. I'm no, I was for, just about um, to go. Is, yeah. now, is Billy Gibbons one of those players where we're going to add the gain in and all of the ZZ Top fans are going to go, he doesn't use he that much gain. gain. Sounds to me. It was a, the best Billy Gibbons tone I think you ever had was in that Magnatone video where we were very loud using the Just turn it all the way up. And yeah. probably that and guitar. It was guitar. Well, that's got that similar kind um, of vibe, was, isn't it? It was very vintage Marshall sounding. Yeah. Game. Who did I see use one of those Magnatone amps recently that just said, it didn't say Magnatone on it, it said something else. But it was one of those things. Maybe it was Joe Perry or somebody who had that. But it, no, it was uh, Jeff Beck. No. Yeah, he used an M80. The Beckmeister. I think it's that, it said, um, what does it say? Not, not, did it uh, say Aquaman it said, on the front of it? It said Aquaman <laughs> tone. <laughs> Aquaman tone. Oh man, somebody has to make an app that says Aquaman. I, I got a text message from somebody uh, who is potentially meeting Johnny Depp and um, Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck soon, uh, maybe even in a guitar playing capacity, but I'm not going to tell you who it is. Uh, you guys will just have to find out. Um, we'll have to get them on. Yes. Uh, they may I want to hear the whole story. They've already been on. Who knows? Just saying. Just dropping that little thing in there. Um, so let's uh, see what else this can do. We go bastards. less gain. Less gain. Hombre, I can't even say it. That's good, man. Uh, I think that is, that's going to sit in one of those like highly, highly congested. There are lots of pedals going after this sort of thing, but it's just a very good sounding standalone. All the pedals are good. Classic overdrive. All the pedals are good. Pedal, and small it? form factor with an. With that's a, a new thing for them, isn't it? There's these very, like almost three no. quarter length. No, I think that's. Like people they're, they're, that wear their trousers like this. At, yeah. You know. That's because they've got water in the basement, as we say in Denmark. <laughs> Is it, is like, have you got water is. in the basement? What do you mean? Because you're, it's just to here. That's okay, um, it's going to get wet. I like, I like the graphic on it. That sort of um, Day of the Dead sort of thang. Uh, right. Should we move on? Yeah, we shall. We shall move on. Shall I need okay. to tell you for this one now? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So, Scarlet, so the Scarlet is, Tunic. Yeah. Uh, Scar Scarlet, Scarlet Tunic. Th Scarlet, Scarlet Johansson Tunic. Yes, absolutely. Is Scarlet Johansson wearing a tunic? Oh, Scarlet Just Johansson. in a backlit room. She's, the, she's, the sun, the she sun's can, coming she can up. do the look, can't she? You know where you, they do the look? Mm, the sun up. coming up. Ooh. The sun coming up, right? Sun mm -hmm. coming up. She's just there, not in the tunic, but just like backlit. Go on. <laughs> 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 we got a little glimpse there. Uh, right. 
<laughs> so, in true uh, Thorpey pedal style, you can't see any uh, of the, it. all of the names of the knobs are engraved so that unless you get it in the right light, uh, you can't see what they do. <laughs> so, master, presence, gain, bass, treble, deep, bright, and sensitive. I'm not listening, man, at all. Ooh, I think three the, positions. Yeah. We've got three positions for sensitive. Uh, oh, and three positions for bright and three for deep as well. Holy moly, there's I some always settings, have three in settings in here. settings in deep. Uh, I normally have three for sensitivity. Yeah. I sort of, uh, uh, not, uh, not listening, don't care, and uh, tell someone else. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to somebody else. Adrian Thorpe, by all means wear the I told you so t-shirt next time you speak to our guitar purchasing team, as they didn't order very many of these because they thought yeah. it was a bit niche and a bit weird. Yeah. Um, and of course, we're now back ordered for weeks because it's infinitely more popular. Yeah. Uh, than we oh, thought it was. So uh, but that amp there we are. It's a very, very. I don't, as we, you talked about to Lee about in the video, why don't they bring that video back out, Selma? Somebody uh, did. So not the video. The, the, uh, the, 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 amp. Some, the amp. Somebody commented who presumably knows more than me that I'm not entirely sure that Selma, the you know brass and woodwind business, still own the amp brand. That someone else might own it. And oh, I see. Okay, 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 okay. So okay. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. so. Um, it's the switches that are a bit odd. So the deep switch influences how the depth of the amp sounds. No Ooh. shit, Sherlock. Uh, the brightness does the same. And the set, ah, here we go. Sensitivity switch. This changes the gain character of the pedal and is like the half or the high-low input jack that you might find on old school amplifiers, but with three levels. Ah, so we've got to find like oh. the desired okay. position before we sort of start dialing stuff in. It's very, very snappy and bright, isn't it? Wow, that's right. I'll say the middle one with that. I think if I again going back to the video I did with Lee, some of those old that you know this is a this was an amplifier that Sid Barrett would use during his sort of Pink Floyd uh, days. So we're sort of you know early Pink Floyd, yeah. late 1960s, very trebly ice picky kind of a guitar yeah. tone, mm -hmm. tone. Not really the kind of tone that manufacturers on modern amplifiers really go for anymore. No. Um, and I think that was why he struggled so much to try and find a pedal that yeah. would do the right sort yeah. of tone. Yeah. So I've, I'm putting this on its deepest, bassiest mode, because I guess to a certain degree, I'm trying to make it sound like amps that I like, yeah, of the, rather of the than amps day. That, that this necessarily is. Yeah. Um, so look, let's see what we can find as a sort of a more conventional drive pedal here, yeah. and then we'll maybe go into some of the more weirdy, well not weirdy settings, but other settings. So. It's very bright, isn't it? Very bright. Very Where's your tone control? Oh, that's nice, though. I feel... Blimey, we're loud, aren't we? I feel like Lee got a lot more gain out of this. Are, we, are you just playing very dynamically soft? Yeah, where's the, where's the... Have you gained all the way...? Yeah, all the way up. Isn't there a...? Sorry. What was that? That's treble. I think, and... I don't think it's a gainy thing. I think it's maybe... There's obviously a, there's obviously a Okay. All right. So the brightness switch has obviously got a ton of gain that it's taking away if you turn the brightness off.
I mean, it's still, it's still got this pointy high end. Uh, try to press and, and turn that down all the way. Don't you think we're making the sort of the fatal mistake of trying to make this pedal sound like something that it isn't? Absolutely. And that you really, you've got to go back to those 60s. I always think of the... the Lee got the, the bass on out of it. Yeah, well, I always think of the riff for Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. And you play that through a Fender Twin with a Maestro fuzz on it. Yeah. And it's the most ear-splittingly awful Yes, we did that in the video. Ever. It's like, whoa. And then you put it in the context of the band playing yeah. Satisfaction. Yeah. And it's just like nailed on. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so exactly. I kind of, I kind of feel like we've just got to play some of that sort of '60s, very bright kind of. What did he play? Rock. Play something like that, that type like, of. That it was that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. it's got that sound, you know. And it. That's a pretty good rock. That's... Let me just go. It reminds me of some of those. Again, I think some of those valve amplifiers that were being manufactured in the 60s you know this is really this is right at the beginning of the whole idea of amps sort of distorting yeah, yeah. and all that kind of vibe yeah. and i think you know a lot of those like selmas and sound cities and stuff did have more of a broken amp overdrive tone yeah. than necessarily these very smooth drive tones yeah. that perhaps that came later. you know fenders and marshalls maybe be <laughs> pioneered but I mean, it's, I certainly you, it's, and it's something different from Thorpe as well. You know, you don't see him do that kind my, of game. Uh, PD, PDX Andy Reverb, is that his yes. channel? I can't remember. He he did a... I, I remember watching his video after we did the Lee Harris one and going, wow, there's a ton of stuff in yeah. this pedal that we've not... I yeah. uh, didn't see in, in the in, with Lee. Um, tons and tons of stuff in that pedal. So that's a good video if you want and to And also, watch that I think well. you can use a little, um, you know, an, an IR, like the little TC IR load at the end of it, and it'll be... I think you can do oh, that. I see. Wow. Well, there we are. Another episode of, um, of Tales from the Pedal Cabinet yeah. that uh, you can pat yourself on the back for sitting through. Um, <laughs> and uh, We are going to give yes. out prizes soon. Absolutely. For, for so, um, yes, all we're through. all off to uh, watch some Rick Beato content. And uh, we'll see and you in cry. another video soon. <laughs> like to <Horrible>. subscribe. <laughs>